Hello, everybody. Where am I? Hi. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Okay. Let me turn off my air. I'm clearly not prepared. All right. Okay. So today we are going to talk about the, uh, oh my God, I really, doing these live is really strange. I do live all the time, but when I'm actually like bringing you real content, hey Melanie, hey Michelle, um, when I'm actually like bringing you real legit content, I'm like, <laughs> I don't know how to start talking. Okay, so listen up everybody. Um, so I have been covering <coughs> almost exclusively, hi puppy dog. Um, I have been covering almost exclusively the uh, rise and fall of Perfectly Posh and how they have been um, acquired by Innovative Nutrition. Now, a lot of my information is still alleged, in my opinion, in my experience, and nothing that I'm saying is that this is fact. But what I am going to share with you today is the income disclosure statement. When I was a perfectly posh consultant, I did not know at all what an income disclosure statement was in the least. I had never heard of it until I found this community. Uh, apparently an income disclosure statement had been released in 2020 and it is not great. It is not great. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you what they have put out as an income disclosure statement. So an income disclosure statement. So for those of you who do not know what it is, let me start there. I should have put written a script, but whatever, we're just winging it. An income disclosure statement is a statement from the company that kind of gives you um, a general idea of like, here's what you could maybe expect to make. Here is the average per rank of what people made in this particular year. Here is the percentage of promoters or representatives or consultants or whatever. Here's the percentage of people who were at this rank in this year. Okay. Here's the average salary or income of that year. Here is the highest salary. Here is the lowest salary. And that gives you a little bit more of a snapshot. Something that is important. I just got hair in my mouth. Sorry. Something that is important to note is that the FTC does not require multi- multi-level marketing companies to even have an income disclosure statement. And the one shady thing that I later realized about Perfectly Posh was they never provided one, ever. Uh, we never saw an income disclosure statement from Perfectly Posh, not once. So I'm gonna show you what they have put out. But I, the reason I was a little bit behind going live was because I was putting it into a chart to make it a little bit simpler for you to kind of consume, right? Because Income disclosure statements, compensation plans, and multi-level marketing are supposed to be confusing. They make them so that you feel bad about yourself when you don't understand them, okay? One more thing I want to point out too, I want to know how many consultants they actually had before this merger with Posh. Carrie, that is an excellent question. If I can find that out, I absolutely will. I would bet that it's not a lot because... In my research, I did find out that Barb, <coughs> Barb and Dave came on to Innovative Nutrition in around 2020, like right before the pandemic, like really started. OK, um, Innovative Nutrition existed, but they were under LaCour Enterprises. And I keep forgetting to mention in all my other videos. So I want to mention it here around 20. Oh, somebody correct me if you're here in the comments, and you know, correctly. Uh, around 2018, 2019, Posh was bought or became part of the LaCour Enterprises umbrella. Okay, so Terry LaCour, who is known as like the Lex Luthor of multi-level marketing. Actually, I would say that, oh my God, what's his name? I already forgot the villain's name from Prove It. Doesn't matter. Terry LaCour looks like Lex Luthor. He's pretty much uh, just creating like a conglomerate of multiple marketing companies. So he had innovative nutrition under his umbrella already. And at that time, they were selling uh, supplements like powder drinks, things like that. Okay. Actual nutrition. And when Barb and Dave Pitcock signed on around 2020, that's when it moved. Eric Worre. Thank you, Michelle. Ugh, I had forgotten his name. I found my bald cap actually when I was in my office yesterday when I was trying to do an Eric Worre uh, impersonation for somebody. Anyhow, 
Um, around 2020 is when they joined perfectly or not perfectly well, innovative nutrition fresh off of the, what had allegedly happened with longevity moving into Wakaya nutrition or something Wakaya something or other. And now they were with innovative nutrition. Okay. And that's when innovative nutrition moved to exclusively these patches. There is a lawsuit that is out right now. Longevity is suing innovative nutrition because they are alleging that there is absolutely nothing in these patches. I can't even, my watch is not working, whatever. They're alleging that there is absolutely nothing in these patches. They claim that they sent the patches to a private lab, SNM Labs, SNN, not SNM, SNN Labs, had them analyzed and nothing came back. I work in cellular retail. Imagine all of a sudden all my company sells is flip phones. I'd be pissed. <laughs> right, exactly. So all of a sudden they just went out into, um, oh my gosh, why is technology? Okay, or Mercury is not in retrograde. So, so that's the basic story. I still don't fully grasp or understand the connection of like, or what happened between the Pitcocks and Longevity I don't fully get it and I don't really care because honestly, the Pitcocks do not seem to be great people. Allegedly, in my opinion, in my experience. So let me share with you the income disclosure statement that they provided in 2020. And as, as a reminder, this is not a requirement for them to share. They do not have to share this at all. All right. Now, these don't typically look like this. The, uh, <laughs> these income disclosure statements, okay, with a lot of places will look more in a chart kind of way. So it's a little easier to use. So let's just read their statement here first. Okay. And then we'll, we'll kind of break it down. The income statistics below are for all United States innovative nutrition incorporated promoters, promoters who were eligible to qualify for downline commissions in 2020, a promoter is defined as having paid the $49 annual promoter fee at some point from January 2020 through December 2020. The average annual income for promoter in 2020 was $538.61, and the median in annual income for all promoters in 2020 was, point was zero dollars. The median annual income for all promoters in 2020 was zero dollars. Let me say that one more time because it's just now um, registering what I said. The average annual income for a promoter in 2020, the average, okay, now again, we don't know how many there were, but we've got a lot to uncover here, so just stick with me. The average was $538.61. And the median annual income for all promoters in 2020 was zero dollars. Now, the reason that I point this out, because people on MLMs will say that these, these income disclosure statements are, are garbage. You shouldn't listen to them because they are taking into account anybody who ever signed up who had no intention of actually selling. But again, I remind you that the FTC, the FTC does not require MLMs to produce an income disclosure statement. So, if they wanted to show the numbers that were accurate to the people who only were selling and not include the people who weren't selling, they could do that. They could absolutely do that. There's no rule that exists that says they have to include all of the people who signed up. No. If they wanted, they could look at 2020 and say, all right, who did who only bought a starter pack? and never bought anything again. Great, we're not including them. But they can't do that because even when people buy a starter pack, they are potentially, most likely, mm, I'm <laughs> my watch is freaking out. They are potentially, most likely, buying product for themselves because in MLMs, you are the customer. So they can't completely rule out that those sales didn't go to an outside customer or to the promoter themselves. And that's why they have to include everybody. Okay. So 0.3%, 0.03% of all promoters did not continue with innovative after their first year. That's, 
Not a lot, actually. Out of approximately, oh wait, I didn't read this part. Out of approximately 3,549 promoters that signed up as U.S. promoters since the beginning of 2020, approximately 3,525 3, were still active at the end of the year. Okay, so we're looking at 3,500 promoters. Let's just round down a little bit. All right, when we look at these numbers, keep that in mind. 3,500 is what we're looking at. Hi, Natalie. Hello, hello. Um, that's what we're working with here, okay? Now, their income disclosure statement, they break it down into these paragraphs to force you to read, okay? To force you to, like, try to read. And honestly, most people aren't going to really want to take the time to read this, and that's why I am here. The first thing that we're going to point out before I go to the chart that I made to make it a little easier, that there's just the promoter. All right. An unranked promoter have been within a video. So they've ever, and you're also going to notice that every single one of these ranks, 11 months, 11 months, 11 months, 11 months. That is because when they first started selling these patches that started in 2020. So this is kind of technically their first year. Okay. Their first year, like existing, even though they were around, everything's underneath the liqueur umbrella, which means that they kept like Terry just keeps coming up with new products, slapping on a label on it and telling people to sell it. Okay. So let's move to the, uh, hold on, hold on. Let me remove that for a second. Do, 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 Pause for some technical difficulties. Hold on. Let me get this. I want this to be here, but I don't want it showing that. All right, hold on. Let me see. Why is this not showing what I want it to show? All right, hold on. Well, that just ruined my big reveal. <laughs> Let me remove that from the studio. Let me try this one more time. Uh, add from, oh my gosh, that should be it. Okay, here we go. So here is, oh, how do I take, all right, I'm going to take myself out for a second. All right. Here's basically, and let me also take out my little banner. Okay. I'm going to take that out. All right. So here you go. So you've got your rank, the percentage of people in the company that fall into this rank, their average income, the high income for the year and the low income for the year. So in 2020, 54.92% of 3,500 people were just promoters. Okay. Their average income was $1.98. On the high was $120.95. And the low was they made $0. Now, if you're just a promoter, you're probably not really doing anything. And we'll pull up the uh, compensation plan here in a moment. Okay. Promoter one, 21.08%. $33.14 was the average income. The high income was $432.77. The low, $0. And let's just go ahead and cut to the chase that up until Promoter Silver Elite, everybody on the low end is making $0. Okay. Promoter three, three point, or no, Promoter two, 6.45%. Average, $147.57 on the high end. People, 6.45% of the 3,500 people in Innovative Nutrition in 2020 on the high end made $897 and on the low end, zero. So the average was $147 for the entire year. Promoter three, 3.44% 3 of 3,500 people averaged $275.40 annually. On the high end, that was $1,033 and on the low, zero. Promoter four, 6.03%. $662, high $3,020 and $54, low zero. Promoter silver, obviously this is not a dollar sign, this should be a percentage, 6.59%, averaged $2,080.19. Michelle, I'll get you on in just one second here. I don't, I'm going to lose my train of thought. $10,273 $10, for the high end, zero for the low. All right, let's bring Michelle on real quick for the robust. Hey, Michelle, Michelle, you're muted. I don't know why. There we go. I'm going to unmute you. No, I can't. I muted I'm, myself. That's why, because right, so, my son is crying upstairs. I mean, so Listen, my daughter's always crying. All right. So Michelle is familiar with, unless they're on the phone with each other. 
Yeah, <laughs> right. So um, everybody, if you don't know Michelle Carpenter, she is at The Spoon Stuff, Fallible Spoonie on Instagram. Um, she is an anti-MLM advocate as like me. Uh, I did not plan an introduction for you, Michelle. I'm sorry. This totally sucks. I, I don't need one. That was great. Great. Perfect. Okay. So Michelle's familiar with income disclosure statements. So I just invited her on to just, you know, shoot the shit with me while we talk about this mess of a company. This is crazy. Can I just say real quick, yeah. just because you already like went over this part, but like, I can't believe how much information this company released on that income disclosure statement. I, I know. Wait till we get to the bottom. It's a doozy. <laughs> it's a doozy. So now we get into where the low end of people actually started to kind of make some money here, right? Promoter Silver Elite. <laughs> I Let me know. mute. That's fine. Promoter Silver Elite. And also, can we just like take a moment and comment on the names of ranks in these companies? It's still makes me giggle. Promoter Silver Elite, only 0.65% of these people made an average of $7,073.34. On the high end, that was $17,640. And on the low end, $342. Promoter Gold was only 0.45% of 3,500 people. Michelle, are you good at math? Can you do a real quick? How many people um, is 40? How many people is 45% of 3,500? Just to give us a rough estimate. Uh, while she's doing that, Promoter Gold Elite, 0.23%. Guys, we're not even talking about a full percentage of people here. $27,087.05. High end, $37,539.43. And the low end, $18,548. I don't Do you think have I... It? Oh, no, I did it wrong. Right. It's like eight people. Um, yeah. Well, the, the, the promoter gold elite, the 0.23%, that's like eight people, eight people out of 3,525, you know, ish Yeah. Uh, promoter platinum 0.03%, even less, even less than, <laughs> than the promoter elite $38,579. Do you want on you hopping on? Okay. Guys, we've got we've got the queen. Hey girl, hey. Oh no, I don't have a space. A, and the whole thing is here. A, she's gonna give us a good insight on this for sure. Um, this point oh three percent, Roberta. Just looking at this, it's I have one no person. Idea what that's, we're that's 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 okay. one person, and you can but you can tell right. without even doing the math because the high and low is exactly the same. Exactly the same as the average. <laughs> so, Roberta, this is Innovative Nutrition's 2020 income disclosure statement. It's the last one that they've ever put out, and it's also basically There's the a first lot of one. zeros on this. I know. And they, the crazy part is we know how many reps there are in their company uh, included in this income disclosure statement. So you can their, do all the math. <laughs> they put at the top of their income disclosure statement that in 2020, let me, let me find it again. Let me read it to you. Um, <laughs> out of approximately 3,549 pro promoters that signed up as U.S. promoters since the beginning of 2020, approximately 3,525 were still active at the end of the year. Wow. So that was in 2020. Hey, so then, <laughs> you're all right, Roberta. <laughs> okay. Look, here's the thing. I had no idea you guys were live. I just saw that there was like a link and I was like, I'm just going to say hi. One, oh, sorry. you're totally not prepared. Say. Two, was about to make dinner. Three, just finished Sunday's podcast and posted it early on Patreon just now. And I was just like, I'm just going to see what they're up to and just say hi. And here I, I mean, am. You can totally hop back out. I didn't, I didn't really and know. That's okay. I had no idea, which is fine. It's totally fine. I just wanted to say hello because hello, hi. I have I haven't been around lately, and I just wanted to say hi. That's all. Hi, Roberta. It's good to see you. But <laughs> but this income disclosure statement looks like pyramid. Like well, even if you right. just stack the numbers on well, top, here's, of each Roberta, other, right? Like, it's shaped you're like just like this, and you put it in the center. It's a pyramid. Right you're gonna want to stay. You're gonna want to stay for this big reveal, which okay. people might know. But here's the best part. So promoter platinum elite 0.14 percent, average 115,000, high 195,000, low 67,000. I have it on good authority, and I'm gonna say allegedly, but I have it on good authority that I know who these two people are. <laughs> two people. Yes, those two people. The two people who are at the top of the pyramid are Barb Pitcott and Heidi Whitehair, who are the CEOs of Is Innovative that... Nutrition. Yeah, no, they I are, can confirm that. They I are mean, I, promoters. I can't 
Okay, I can confirm, but not officially confirm right, right. that I have emails in my email box from people that used to be massively high up in, in MLMs and connected to those who have said to me that pyramid number one is usually the CEO. And that has been their experience in every company that they have been associated with, not as a rep, but as a, a a partner mm -hmm. of people in high executive positions. So that, allegedly in their opinion and right. their experience in exactly. my inbox. And that's mm. again, in that inbox. goes right into this. Well, I'm so, I should add that. that to the shirt at From, the bottom. In my <laughs> inbox. In my so, inbox. According yeah. to my information, they don't receive a salary. No, of course they not. They are, right. They are the pr yeah. promoter platinum pr premier elite. They are. Um, Derek but Maxfield. Uh, this was like something happened earlier this year. Derek Maxfield, who's the CEO of Unique. <laughs> he made this whole thing like, I'm not going to be taking a paycheck what? anymore. And all the Unique people were like, oh my God, he's incredible. And I was like, and he's pyramid number one. He doesn't need a paycheck. He's making more than everybody on his bonus check right. every month. Right. Exactly. Now, but no one ever knows that here. Anyway, I'm going to go eat my Chinese food, absolutely. but I just go to do to everybody. Go eat. <laughs> <Bye everyone>. <laughs> Melanie says I've got cotton and bandage tape. Who needs, who wants wellness? <laughs> I've got, I need this, all I've the wellness. Right I've got mine right here. All right, Roberta, go eat your hello fresh. I've Let's, got my um, wellness from Roberta. <laughs> I know I got mine. Oh my God. I forgot to tell her. I'm so mad when she was on. I got my verb in the mail today too. Uh, text her. But we should open them together and talk about them in a minute. Okay. Um, okay. Here's what they wrote at the end. Note that these figures do not represent an innovative promoter's profit as they do not consider profits earned from person retail sale or expenses incurred by a promoter in operation or promotion of his or her business. So what that's saying is this does not in, this does not take into account if you bought product with the intent of selling it at a vendor sale, because then maybe you upcharged. Okay, sure, that makes sense. But let's continue. The figures above refer to gross income, total income before any expenses are deducted. The expenses a promoter incurs in the operation of his or her innovative business vary widely. You should factor in estimated expenses when projecting potential profits. Such operating expenses could include advertising and promotional expenses, product samples, <sighs> training, travel, telephone and internet costs, business equipment, and miscellaneous expenses. The earnings of the promoters in this disclosure are not necessarily representative of the income, if any, that a promoter can or will earn through his or her participation in the innovative compensation plan. These figures should not be considered as guarantees or projections of your actual earnings or profits. Any representation or guarantee of earnings would be misleading. Success with innovative nutrition results only from successful sales efforts, which require hard work, diligence, leadership, period. There's, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was it. <laughs> there is no and here. It doesn't, it doesn't end. It's just, okay. For more information about how to earn income, review the innovative nutrition policies, procedures, and compensation plan. Oh, I did yesterday. I got really curious and I went down a freaking rabbit hole. And did you? Oh man, it is good. It is. Uh, it's one of the worst I've seen. Uh, I need it, to pull it back. It's so up. funny because it brings me back. I wish I had pulled up. If I had, if Can I had you actually post a time. link in the private chat or something. Yeah. If I had taken the time to really plan this live instead of just being like, I'm going live and just like, you know, a crazy person. Um, you waited I, a few hours after announcing it. I was surprised. I and did, you well, scheduled was, it in advance. I was with, I know I was with the children, so I didn't have time to actually like plan. Um, but what was it? Wait, what was I going to say? Mm, shoot. Well, let's just get back to this conversation, but let me, let me pull it up on my screen here. All right. So the, okay. Stop share screen. Let me, hi guys. Okay. Let me pull this up. Oh, don't oh like this that. is not, um, sorry. This I'll is the most current because it has posh on it. 
All right, so let's just take a moment. Welcome, innovative posh promoter and or innovative promoter and posh consultant. All right, clearly I'm not going to read this to you, but look at this delightfully well thought out mission statement. Can we break this down for a moment? To provide superior products for families along with a business opportunity. So short and sweet. What a mission statement. Great. Your vision is maybe four sentences. It's got money. Okay. So customers, anyone can join Innovative Nutrition as a customer by purchasing a product. Thank you for treating us all like we are idiots. Promoter, $49.95 to become an Innovative Nutrition Promoter. Renews annually. Smart ship customers. Oh, look, they've got the smart ship. Hey, do you have... Oh, what? God, smart ship. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Do you have um <clears throat> do you have the uh link to the policies and procedures? I might. I No, I can find it. You go on with your thing. Okay. <laughs> you go on with your show. Oh, here's your, your little show here. <laughs> My little show. What what's happening? Um here's something that I find really interesting because I did find I did get some word today that a lot of posh people are watching my content about all of this. So for, for those of you that are here, um, and, and when I spoke to this person today, you know, she said like posh was different. And I know like if Roberta was here, she'd be like, no, they're not all, they're all the same. Posh tried to be different. And that's why posh failed. Posh was not nearly as cringy. Posh was not as gross as so many of these MLMs. And I think that so many of these consultants are now suddenly seeing what the rest of multi-level marketing is outside of posh. So, and so it's just like a completely different world now that they're like suddenly being opened up to, but, and I, none of them have ever seen an income disclosure statement because posh never put one out, even though they were around for 10 years, they could have. Um, but I think one of the biggest red flags that anyone should ever take to anything is if there has to be a glossary of terms when you are trying to read a compensation plan. A glossary of terms is going to be one of the biggest red flags to start noticing when cult-like behavior is starting to rear its head. And I say cult-like behavior because if you read Amanda Montel's book, Cultish, she talks about how when you're in a cult, when you're in a group, okay, when you're in a group that's like a cult-like thing, they use their own vernacular, their own words. So for example, when you start saying things like, hey, how's your TTV this month? And nobody else in the room is going to know what that means. That's just a little special thing between you and your consultants. So when you start using vernacular that is only specific to your MLM, that's when you are bordering on cult-like behavior. So a glossary of terms is already very concerning, okay? Okay. Listen, this, Michelle, you said you read it. I've read it probably five times. It is one of the most difficult for me to comprehend. No, I have not read over the comp plan. Um, uh, I okay. have read Plus the policies procedures. and procedures. Gotcha. All right. Which is, by the way, 42 pages long. You have to agree to 42 pages worth of terms and conditions to sign up to be an well, innovative consultant. No wonder <laughs> they fired me. I didn't read that shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So a profit level qualified promoter earns up to 30, up to a 30% savings on their own personal purchases. Okay. So a savings would mean, do I just get 30% off when I'm purchasing the cotton patches? A promoter earns a savings on their own personal purchase outlined below. Okay. I, it's very interesting to me that they keep, that they phrase it as savings. I find that to be very interesting. So from zero to $1,000, you only make 15%. Listen, I, and I'm not sitting here. I'm not trying to be like, Posh was so bad, great and better, whatever. But with Posh, it was like 25% right out the gate. Now they did go back and forth. They had a couple of times. I know there's some Posh people in the comments. They did go back and forth a couple of times with the compensation plan. At one point, there was the sphere of influence. If you are a Posh consultant and you're in the comments, please tell me if you know about the sphere of influence because I was there for the sphere of influence and it made it less. And this is again, when they tried to be less like an MLM, they made it less like a pyramid because if I recruited Michelle and Michelle recruited Roberta and then Roberta recruited somebody else, whoever Roberta recruited was not going to affect my income. The only people that affected me were Michelle and Roberta. So it was like my first downline and my second downline. 
there was no more money to be made from people below that. And that made it less like pyramidy. But then that's kind of like the opposite, con the opposite of the concept that a lot of MLMs have of um, spillover volume where like with in Beachbody with the spillover volume from my uplines, uplines, uplines organization, I was like, basically if I was hitting my goals for the month, I was making money off of many, right. many, many more people than exactly than the sphere. <laughs> right. Right. Hold on. Let me just post this real quick. We are live. Um, so that was, definitely like they were trying to be less cringy. Okay. And I get it. But then they started calling us influencers and I was not. Carrie says, I do remember this beer, but I was concerned for six years. I've never focused on recruiting. Ah, gotcha. So, but again, I didn't like being called an influencer. I hated it. I, I refused to do it, whatever. So when we're looking at this though, you have to sell a thousand dollars. So you're worth. totally one now. Huh? I you're am. totally one now. Yeah, I know. Um, a thousand dollars of product and you only get 15%. Now the, the products though are only patches. Plus, you know, if you're selling posh stuff, okay. But like, I know that if I was only selling product, I was not selling a thousand dollars in a month. And I'm certain that there are consultants right now who are now promoters that were like, I like they're taking a huge pay cut because they were at least making 25%. And now they're only making 15%. Okay. So 1,001 to 2,000 is 20%. 2,001 to 4,000 is 25%. 4,001 plus is when you get your 30% when you are a silver promoter. Like that is, I don't understand how they think like, because Heidi said in that live on my part two, you everybody, can be a six figure earner. Everybody wins. Everybody wins in innovative. I don't know what you mean. You have to start over. No, everybody does not win. As your income disclosure statement reveals, everybody does not yeah. win. Um, two people, two people yeah, win, man. Two people are winning and their names are Bar Pitcock and Heidi Whitehair. Okay. So now you've got your four ways to earn your retail profits, your wholesale profits, your downline commissions and your bonuses. But again, look at this pyramid. Look how lovely. It I is, just, it, 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 it's, it's incredible how just transparent it is. They think that people are really dumb. And the, the fact of the matter is nobody reads it. No, nobody is going to read all of this crap. That's why it's so confusing. And that, right. but that's also, it has no substance because four ways to earn, there are no ways to earn. This is right. all theoretical. It's like, oh, well, in theory, you could sell $300,000 worth of product this month. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So let's just, I'm going to like pop onto their website real quick. So if we're looking at just the patches, like they're $60 for these, for this uh, one month supply of patches, but then you get into slim and trim $319 and 95 cents, uh, over 40 trio pack. Oh, if you're over 40, <laughs> this is for you. $160. Like there are some things that Wait, what? Listen, hold on. Let me, let me switch over. Let me, let me share this. Let's just take a look at their website. All right. So here's the innovative website. <sighs> here's their topical patches. Yeah, I know. I tried to become a consultant last night. Well, not really. I mean, I tried to get as far as I could in the process right. to see what so they let's provide. Just, let's just take a look at this. Okay. I'm going to bring this large here. Can I? There we go. One month supply. $60. <laughs> okay. $60. You shut up, Michelle. Okay. Let's, let's just take a look. Oh, today only? Today only? This is Oh, I see. It's not a sale. It means, oh, if you can either add the monthly smart ship or can you see what I'm doing here? Yeah. Okay. So let's look at the details of the slim and trim for $320. <laughs> Foundation. Oh, yeah. well, let's watch the video. $320. Does anyone buy this shit? I mean, apparently. I guess I can't watch the video. Why can't I watch the video? Yes, Lizzie. Th this is Innovative's website. Yeah, so this is the products that we're we're looking at the patches that were for innovative B 
before the posh products came in. Okay. So, I mean, this like tells you nothing about stay toned and energized with a night infinite, infinite and infinite. Mm -hmm. Is that infinite and sleep? Yep. So there are three different types of patches. What are you supposed to wear these all like three a day? Disclaimer, innovative products are not. Okay. So this is what's interesting to know. Innovative products are not offered for sale to persons under the age of 18. Let's just make sure we remember that. Okay. So before Posh joined them, the only thing they sold, sold, I can't even talk, were these terrible patches. Okay. That was it. Now let's look. So now when you add in the Posh products, like, let's see what they even kept. I mean, they kept BFF. I mean, here's the, th and here's the thing. I loved Posh's products. When I had an interview with a consultant earlier last month, um, they said the quality of the ingredients was definitely going down. So that, um, so that kind of definitely sucks, but like, this is definitely way more to, to shop from than just, <laughs> than just these patches, right? But even so, to sell 10,000 or to sell $1,000 of hand cream for most of the consultants that came over from Posh, this is not doable. It's just not doable. Let's see what they say when you click on join. And make 150 bucks. Right. Oh, you can build your own custom pack. So your get started fast pack. And that's the other thing. With Posh, again, not trying to be like, I love perfectly Posh. I'm just talking about how they try to keep it you know, general, there was two different ways you could join. One was like $30 to get the website or like to become a consultant and you would get a couple samples in the mail. And then the 99, or I think they had to raise it to $109, got you like the starter kit. And then it, it, that was it. Like there was no, like, here's all these different levels or whatever. It was not a big, it was not a thing. And I don't think, I don't recall that the sale of the starter kit went to the PV for the, for the consultant. So like it literally, um, they don't usually, I think, I think they actually can't have that for know. like regulatory reasons. If I remember correctly, I feel like in Monet it does. That's why they have these different product pack ranks because I don't know. More, I, I need, I mean, I, it, to I me, what it, it probably is not a percentage commission of how much the starter pack costs. It's probably a different bonus depending on which starter pack Maybe they have. Right. Um, but Let's I see, wanted to say gosh, real quick, Lizzie's, yeah, go ahead. Lizzie's comment. Um, What's going on? There you go. Going I think, um, I think, I don't know what other creators you watch, Lizzie, but um, I think that that might have been an MLM horror story on Hannah Alonzo's channel, and oh, it, was. it was nuts. Yeah, it was so. Was. It's so scary that these girl boss moms like get it in their heads that their MLM, their pyramid scheme product, is going to be good to give their children. Like, oh my god, Michelle does have better stickers. They actually give me, they give me life. As I really um, see, I need to I need to make my own uh, um, skin apps or what body app or whatever. Oh, all you need is is this flexible fabric from Target. It's it's all you need. Um, here's what's interesting, Michelle. I know that you've probably looked at a number of join pages like I have. Mm -hmm. This one says absolutely nothing about why anyone should join. Oh, maybe here under opportunity. Would that be why? Where it says, oh, here's the yeah. opportunity. Here's the buzz. I went through oh. this page yesterday on my own. I went, I'm telling you, Mallory, after I watched your part two episode uh, thing and you did not have a part three for me to binge watch, I was like, I'm going down this rabbit hole. <laughs> We're uninnovative be now this because be three, I just yeah. can't believe how condescending and defensive these, like, quote unquote executive professionals or whatever. Yeah, like, all and they're not. <laughs> yeah. I they're not professional. But that's the thing though, it's like when people say And great, these like stock photos on their <laughs> literal stock photos right. these on their opportunity people. page. And the only picture they have that's not a stock photo looks like it was taken in nineteen ninety five. 
But at a we should really party. just lay, label this picture like meet your silver promoter elites. <laughs> <laughs> this is your upline. <laughs> yeah, like this is... And I'm sorry, I need Ken Whitehair to get rid of this mustache. I can't, I can't take it with the mustache. I'm not, I'm not down to clown with that. It's just, it's got to go. Mm -mm. I think, did I talk about it in part two where Heidi made Choose sadness. <laughs> choose, <laughs> choose sadness body sticker. Yes, Melanie, we are definitely, uh, we're going to need that one in your merch shop post haste. Mm. Um, yeah, Heidi made this big deal about, using the word tribe and it's not offensive to anyone because her husband is one eighth. I forget what she said, what, what tribe. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it just brought me back to like, no, you don't get to just tell people that <laughs> because it's not offensive to you, that it's not offensive to anyone. So let's just real quick, go back and take a look at this income disclosure statement. Okay. I made this chart because their income disclosure statement is uh, oh Sage. Thank you, Carrie. Um, this income disclosure statement, uh, they write it in paragraph form, which is intentional. Like a, that's intentional for you to just be so like, you don't I don't see read this. this. Right. Because if they did it like this, but, but you know what I realized their income disclosure statement looks exactly like the prove it one, which is also under LaCour Enterprises, mm. which is also why Barb Pitcock has a picture with Jesse Lee Ward. Jesse Lee Ward. Yeah. Yeah. So just to point out here, guys, up to promoter silver, okay, the low end people are making zero dollars, <laughs> zero dollars. Like I, I it, oh, we I laugh, like, we laugh because we've been through it. Yeah. But listen, like, let's go back to sucks. That's a, these people bust their asses. Like nobody here is saying that network marketers do not work hard. No, like these people are working so hard. We know we because know. we've done it. They are, they are working so hard my, and making $0. dollars. <laughs> my, my former upline, I'm telling you, she was nonstop and she was, and that's the thing. She was good at it. And she was, man, Man, the man is man. man step. She was good at it and she but she was kind and she believed in it. And like I know it, it sucks because I know how much time she spent. And however she ended up finding out about this, I don't know. I don't know the details of how she found out this was happening, but I can only imagine what it must have felt like to is, I mean, I will say for her, I mean, we always say like, you don't own your own business and no, she didn't own her own business, but she was running essentially a business yeah. with all the things that she was doing, the trainings that she was giving and the amount of yeah. time she was giving to her team. Um, she worked her butt off and now to find out it's like all different and it's completely different. I can't even imagine. I can't fathom. Um, living in Arizona, you don't throw the moniker tribe around like that. I would bet that you don't. I would bet that you don't. So let's just take a look again, though, at this, this comp plan, because this is where they give these examples that just, they don't make sense. Like, let's just call it what it is and say that they don't make sense. Can I make this bigger? All right. Example A, Sue qualifies on her 4000 and one dollar which makes her a silver rank promoter cindy doesn't have a thousand dollars so she doesn't qualify womp womp cindy you suck and you didn't try hard enough oh, joe has cindy. A, but here's what i understand joe has a thousand dollars unallocated so he qualifies with sue as a silver rank what does that mean what does unallocated money mean because it's not in this pyramid thing here Okay, wait, let's go back. So this is what we have to do. We have to go back to the glossary. So let's go back to the glossary. Unallocated, is it on there? <sighs> Unallocated volume that is not being allocated used for qualification purposes to achieve silver promoter rank. What does that mean? Well, there are... I I like, I don't understand. Volume that is not being used for qualification purposes to achieve silver promoter rank. Why would you have any volume that is not being used to achieve a rank? Or is it just that it doesn't matter how much you make over $4,001? Is that what well, that really boils down to? Is, um, in this version of the compensation plan, are there levels below someone where they stop getting their volume to contribute to their rank? It, that might be in. 
that might be what it is. But let's like my downlines, 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 new recruit, their volume is technically part of my organization, but because they're so far below me, I don't actually make a bonus off of it. I guess. Okay. But then to earn retail profits, a profit level qualified promoter. So what does that mean though? Uh, earns up to 30% retail profit. So up I bet to, it's in the glossary. A promoter earns retail profits on all retail customer sales. The amount of retail profit depends on their profit level. Right. And you know what I wonder if when you hit, like if I hit promoter three, do I then make 25% on everything before that? I wonder if somebody can tell me that. Or if it's like, okay, you made 20% on up to, you know, 1,001 to 2,000. I don't know. To earn wholesale profits, okay, wholesale profit is earned by promoters on their downline promoters. Okay, a profit level qualified promoter or promoter earns the difference between the profit level of their downline. What? And their own profit level if one exists. Okay, example one, promoter B is at a 15% profit level. All right, so Michelle, you are promoter B, you're at a 15% profit level. I'm promoter A, and I'm at a 30% profit level. You would make yourself the upline. No, you know, it's my show. <laughs> <laughs> promoter A earns 15% on the product order of promoter B. So okay. whatever you sell. So you, you make I, 15% off of my... That's what I, I think that means. But is that coming from innovative or is that coming off of what you make? No, that couldn't, that comes from innovative, right? Oh, off of the product. Or, so, it, no, it's what I've bought. So you make, you make 15% commission on my personal sales. Oh, your, per, your personal purchases or your retail? Yes. No, purchases is what I meant. Okay. My personal purchases. This is so. My upline would make, Hi. Um, welcome to the show. I don't know where Mallory went. Uh, caught me at an awkward moment here. Mallory, Mallory, I will continue to entertain your show. Ugh, Spider-Man. I have no idea what just happened. Oh, you're back. I can't believe it stayed live. That's what's even stranger. Google just shut down. Google I held on the fort. But I can't believe I just was like, oh, the whole thing is gone. I don't know yeah, what happened here. That was okay. very strange. It was, I can't believe you're here. I was like, I can start over. Okay, where were we? We were talking about. Well, I was singing Spider Man theme song while you were gone. <laughs> I wonder if it just like restarted. I don't know. Okay. Where were we in this ridiculous compensation? Okay, so we were looking at these examples. Promoter B is at 50% profit level and promoter C below B in line of sponsorship. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Is at 50% profit. Promoter A is at a 30% profit. Promoter A earns 50% of the product order of promoter B and promoter C combined. Promoter B earns 5% on promoter C. So it's a, it's a pyramid scheme. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's literally laying out, you make, you make just a little bit less, but still make commission on the personal product sales of the people who work for the company. You know, and I think, okay, so I think Posh did this, but in a simpler way that made more sense, the way they explained it at least, because if my whole team so it wasn't individual though. And I didn't make money. I, I don't remember specifically, but it was like, if, you know, if my downline Lauren, who was one of my really good friends, well, she's still a really good friend, but if Lauren had a party of like a thousand dollars, that only counted towards the team volume. I think if I recall correctly, it's not like I made, maybe I did. I don't remember. I don't remember. Cause it's all hogwash and then look at this you only get a monthly bonus when you get to double platinum elite like you otherwise what, these examples? what it, like this doesn't make any sense to me 
Joe has a thousand dollars in orders from him and his customers. Cindy has an order for four ninety five. Sue places four thousand dollars in orders. Uh, that guys, this is this is maddening. This makes no sense. Then you've got your rank qualifications. Okay, a rank qualified. Oh my god! Order, right, this is so confusing is a promoter who has a total team volume includes your volume as well as your customers and promoters of four thousand and one dollars to earn downline commissions as a rank qualified promoter silver you must have a total team volume as listed above personal volume of only a hundred dollars minimum number of active personal retail customers required is two so you have to have two customers Oh my God. To earn downline commissions, 5% on level one promote. Oh my God. Promoter Silver Elite, 15,000 in team volume, 150, and four active retail customers. And then you get this percentage on your promoters. This is, oh my God. This is asinine. Like, how is anybody supposed to even the thing? I mean, it just uh, the with all of these conditions that have to be met to qualify for different things and mm -hmm. knowing how many people were included in that 2020 income disclosure and looking at the percentages, right. this this comp plan applies to virtually no one because the vast majority of people fall into the promoter, like not even promoter. Wait, what what's what's this say? For qualification purposes only, maximum volume counted per leg is 60%. Okay, but what do you mean per leg? Because nothing in this indicates legs. They're not talking about a binary comp plan in anything. It's copied and pasted. It, right. Do they just copy pasta this like right over? 